Welcome back to the Ronnie and Ernie Show. I'm Ron Williams. I'm a sommelier and wine specialist, a pianist, archer, martial artist. Figured how many things I can add. And I'm here with... I'm Ernie Zahn. I'm a filmmaker, which includes producing, directing, cinematography, editing. I dabble in sound recording and engineering, as well as apparently I can draw. Yeah, I'd say so. And um, I can swim, which doesn't usually help with film, but I do know how to do that. What if you're getting underwater shots? I okay, so I've actually done that before. Hey. When I was twenty two, I um was shooting a film and I had to order a special like pressurized case for a camera and I had to be um I had to be underwater for like thirty, forty seconds at a time. Wow. Um filming. And then coming up for air frequently and stuff like that. It was a budget thing. It's not exactly like I was snorkeling or scuba diving. You know, um, or yeah, there's no, there was no um, compressed air tanks supporting my, you know, my cinema, cinematic endeavors that day. It was all just, you know, how how well can I be? Uh, I was trying to think of a good Quint phrase there. Like you got salt water in your veins. <laughs> um, Time your sheep shank. I was watching Jaws the other day. Oh, wait, let's finish the intro. Um, Each week we get together and discuss our shared interests. <laughs> and despite our very different lines of work, it's our shared interests that give us an opportunity to collaborate on various projects. And sometimes we talk about those things right here on this podcast. On the Taya podcast. Oh, there's already music to the show. We don't have to do that. Yeah, you don't need to do that. You, it's like doing your own sound effects. It's That's an edit. Yeah, that's fine. So... You, you know, you know how I know that other podcasts decide when to edit something because they leave it in and they say that's an edit and they don't edit it out. Talk shows do that too. That's an edit. <laughs> yeah, or it's like it's like saying we'll fix it in post. It's sort of just like a it's like it's almost like a self-deprecating creative comment. Mm. Makes you seem more genuine. Yeah. So we're drinking coffee right now. Well, I'm drinking green tea. I've, I've consumed my coffee. So now I'm on to okay, the green I'm tea. I'm working on my second shot. Mm. I got this Mexican cocoa from the Savory Spice Shop in Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. And I mix it in with the espresso. It's amazing. Mm. I do uh, love me some Much Mexican. better way to have a mocha. No syrup. Yeah. What did you say? I said I do love me some Mexican. That's uh, true. Um... So, um, I have a question for you. Shoot. Um, I don't think I've talked about my my living situation um, on the show before, but you're somewhat familiar with it, right? Yeah. New apartment? I I was planning to move out um, of my current rental in Albuquerque, and... um, and I mo- wanted to move it up because I figured, let me just find a place and be settled for the next 12 months on a lease. Um, and this is when coronavirus was a topic of conversation. There were still shows happening. There were still things going on. There's still plenty of activity. I mean, we all now have been led to understand that was probably unwise. Yeah. But, but the point is, I was just as – I was an unwitting – you know, participant of, of daily normal life like everybody else. Or not was that that's not the right way to describe that. Blissfully you know I mean? unaware. I, no. Blissfully <laughs> unaware. Thank you very much. Um I wasn't an unwitting participant of society. <laughs> <laughs> Damn society. It sound like Making me wear clothes. It sound and... like I'm I'm in the matrix or something like that. That's what that sounds like. Mm. Um no, but what I was saying what I was thinking was I feel uh, I think everybody got the feeling that something was impending, like what was going on in Europe was eventually going to come here, but it hadn't really happened at the levels that we were thinking. So things were still moving. And everything was functioning as normal. Um, well, the supermarkets were still getting cleared out. It was like the day before a blizzard, but the blizzard's going to yeah, exactly. last three every, months. Every day for a couple of weeks was the night before a hurricane. Mm. Um. 
And uh, so I figured, okay, we might have to kind of shelter in place for a little while. So let me just get my living situation, excuse me, living situation settled. Um, and I don't know if it was just that the market was reacting poorly or what, but like all of the listings on Zillow were disappearing. And I was going to do a quick trip with a friend of mine to Louisiana, uh, to New Orleans, um, before my big move. And so at that time, there were some cases in Washington, but there wasn't really any, any indications that it was really spreading across state lines. Also, they weren't doing any testing. Degree. So it was probably spreading far There was no sooner. testing yet. Yeah. This, was, this was before New York became what it, what it became hub. by March and all that stuff. And this was like the very beginning of March. Um, when we um, got on the plane... I was still feeling like iffy even then. I was like, am I being a hypochondriac or am I am I being smart Playing right now safe. with how concerned I am and all that? And um, there were two presumptive cases in, in the state of Louisiana at the time. By the time we landed, there were 13 confirmed. And then uh, Trump got on, you know the TV and whatever, and talked about the travel ban that he was going to institute. That's when he declared a state of uh, emergency, right? Two days later was the state of wow. emergency. So we were, ho my friend and I were holed up in a hotel, making phone calls with American Airlines and just seeing if we can get an earlier flight. And just, they're swamped because everybody, because American Airlines is an international airline, right? So there's a bunch of folks probably in, Europe, in Paris and London and stuff like that trying to catch flights who are, you know, naturalized American citizens who are trying to get back before the deadline. Um, so their, their phone lines were completely tied up. Um, and um, So how'd you get back? So we looked up um, the cost of renting a car. And I didn't think that this was going to be affordable, but we looked at what the cost for moving up a flight would be, and it would be almost nine hundred dollars. Holy shit! Um, to to change it at such last minute, to, at such short notice, you could almost buy your um, own plane for that much. <laughs> yeah, it was going to fly, a kid. Um, <laughs> and so uh, the um, uh, what's it called? So I. I was in a similar situation where I had to get back to Albuquerque and my car was busted and I wanted to rent a car and the cost you remember this the yes. cost of well, renting wait, wait, wait. a you car had broken and getting myself down where in the middle of the desert between Tucson and Phoenix oh so this is a God. different story but this is just a little background okay. to why I was uneasy about renting a car okay all right so this so my story is a little bit of a Quentin Tarantino film hmm. Right, so we're going back to another memory. Time skip for a second. A little flashback. Diff it's a different. It's a different chapter in the story. Okay, and we'll, we'll resume. We'll resume present day in a moment. Um, and um, when I broke down, then um, it was engine issues, and this was an older car, and the cost of the repair on the engine is far greater than what what the value of the car was. Mm. Um, so. I asked, what would it cost to rent a car from Tucson back to Albuquerque? And I was told, because it's a single trip rental, basically, I'm paying for Enterprise, oops, slipped their name, um, to drive the car back to Albuquerque. So I'd basically be paying double, as if I went from Tucson to Albuquerque and back, even though I'm going one way. Ooh. I would pay, I would basically cover the cost for the car to go round trip. It's a tidy sum. Um, which I was perplexed by, and I was thinking, well, that's that's a that's a healthy chunk out of a down payment on buying a new car, which seems like the inevitable. Well, wait, how much was it? Conclusion for the I mean, rental to get you out of the desert. Uh, they ballparked it around five hundred to six hundred dollars. Wow. And I would have put about two grand on a used on a pre-owned new car. New to me, right? Yeah. Um, and it's pretty reasonable. So I figured, well, if I'm putting two grand down, you're a quarter of the way there. I'm fi I'm fifteen hundred <laughs> down, getting back to Albuquerque to do the inevitable thing. I know I'm going to do. 
So I decided just I'm going to buy a car right now in Tucson. <laughs> and Let's go car shopping. Like incredibly caffeinated because I wanted to also be very mindful of all the things – because, you know, obviously buying a new car is is a big decision and there's a lot of factors to consider. So I didn't want to hastily go through this and, and commit however many months to car payments to something that would have been a bad choice. So I had to operate like I had more time to make this decision. So I I induced I induced a caffeinated state that made me feel a little bit like uh, Tobey Maguire in the first Spider-Man. Like I could see the fist coming at me at like... <laughs> You know, uh, so you were one, on one PCP, mile a minute. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> and so, uh, you know what it was? It was just the drip coffee at the dealership. Ooh. But I probably had enough coffee for one small family. What did that do to um, your stomach? Just out of curiosity, because I know that would wreck uh, me. You know, I didn't have enough time during that day to actually have proper meals, so I think. All the stuff that was going on in my head was so overwhelming. I couldn't pay attention to anything else my body was trying to tell me. Wow. Um, I don't even remember going to the bathroom that day. It may have happened. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the point is I, I covered every single detail I would have thoughtfully gone through, and I did it to the best of my ability. And it turns out that I made some of the better choices I could have made and got out of there. The whole fiasco began at 7 a.m., and by noon, I was on the road with a new car on my way to Albuquerque. It's a pretty good turnaround. It left me feeling jaded about the notion of renting a car to get back home, though, right? From Louisiana, now we're back in present day, flashback to... Now we're back in present okay. day, right. and I'm thinking that round-trip thing was so prohibitive. And Tucson to Albuquerque, for people who are not familiar, that's about a six-hour drive. It's not crazy. New Orleans to Albuquerque is 17 hours. That's not as much um, as I expected. I expected more. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, it's um, it's still a bit of a drive, and that's just if you're stopping like very quickly for food and gassing up, and that's it. For petrol. Um. But um, same, and I, and I'll, I'll mention I mentioned Enterprise before when I was speaking. Uh, you know. Uh, disparagingly, perhaps, um, or complaining. Um, and I'll mention them again because I don't know if it's like a um, a location-to-location -location policy, but this enterprise rented us um, a um, – it was like a, like a fuel-efficient kind of car, like a Toyota or a Honda, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, 197 bucks. That's it. Wow. New Orleans to Albuquerque compared to the 500 plus for the other rental or 900 for the, for other the rental, flight where you'd put be going to an airport what, and putting like yourself at further risk. The driving time? Yeah. And we didn't get any indication that this was a deal because of what's going on right now or anything like that. They're just like, "Oh, you don't you don't you don't have we even asked them, "Is there like a round trip fee that we're not seeing here?" And they said, "No." And then I checked my balance after the whole thing was done. We did the 17-hour drive in one shot, and I'm a terrible passenger, so I insisted on driving the whole way. <laughs> so I did it from 7 a.m. till the the bitter end. Wow. Um, did, how much did you spend on gas? So what did like the trip total come to? We gassed up twice. What? And then I and then I and I topped it off when we got there. Just to bring um, it in, just so we yeah. didn't get an so we didn't get an upcharge, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I could have, if it was just my car and I was worried about, you know, filling it up later, I could have just done two stops. I mean, it was like a Hyundai or something like that. Hmm. Well, that's pretty. I think that's, it got that's like good. forty-five miles to the gallon or something. Wow. Well, you're it's wide <laughs> open road, highway miles, yeah, and you weren't speeding. Yeah, I, just, I was just sitting on cruise control. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty fuel so, efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then I got home, but because by the time I got back, so two presumptive cases when we left, that was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. There were two presumptive cases. By Wednesday, 13 confirmed. By the time Friday rolled around and we were just pulling into Albuquerque, they had 1,000 confirmed. And then a week later, 20,000, I think, or no, 13,000. Whoa. Um, That's insane. 
so I exponential. For two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So I, I self quarantined for two weeks. My um my roommate had a uh, had a friend who vacated their apartment, so I stayed there in quarantine for a while. Then I stayed with another friend, and then by that time, I was already on my way of moving out to my orig- from my original place. So it's kind of in limbo. I've I'm in a place now, um, but this is also just for the duration of this whole situation, this whole global situation. So you're gonna move so again after this is all done? Yes, and this is my question. What um, I and the thing is, last last place I moved into, I ditched all my kitchenware, all my furniture, and everything else besides just my practical stuff, like my film equipment, my computer, my my personal standing desk that I made, um, and just my my wardrobe basically. Because this was some I moved into somebody else's home, and they already had all the essentials. Yeah. So I'm trying to go back and think about some of the things, especially in mind with all the recipes that we talk about, because I do like to cook a lot of the recipes that you come up with. Thank you. What would be your recommendation as a culinary enthusiast, wine and spirits expert? Um, Ten, outside of the obvious things, like I'm going to get flatware. Um, The Dollar Tree amazingly sells those Admiral Adama. uh, (gasps) They they still have them? Yeah, oh my yeah. god, the Battlestar glasses from the Dollar Tree. It's a dollar. Okay. It's a dollar to have the I if they knew how much these uncannily look like the Battlestar things, they could just upcharge <laughs> and call them collectibles. Aren't they aren't um, they penta- pentagonal, not uh octagonal or hexagonal? The Battlestar they are pentagonal. Battlestar is close. hexagonal, right? Yeah. Okay, but the these are One, two, pentagonal. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight octagonal. Oh, you're right. You're right. Because the paper everything's also octagonal everything's octagonal. The yes. There's no corners. That's right. Okay. Um. So they yeah the glasses are octagonal as well. Um, it's very close though. Hey, it still looks pretty good, and they're they're they hold a fair amount too. Like it's that's a, a good, great like rocks glass. Yeah, it is. Um. Uh, so you were asking me like, what it's necessary... Almost like a, it's almost like a slightly larger Gibraltar. Like, what's that called? Um, what's that smaller latte called? I have no you know, idea you, what you're talking about. You know, you know like, it's it's the coffee shop thing. Gibraltar, it's in a Gibraltar glass. I have never heard that term. Um, oh, man. What's that latte called? It's like a latte, but it's just that it's smaller. Cortado. Gibraltar? <laughs> yeah. It's those Duralex glasses. Uh I've I've never anyway, had it's one. not worth it's not worth the dead air. No. It's not worth the dead air. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. What were you saying? I don't know. You had a question and what you never finished. Okay. Ten besides the obvious essentials. Yeah. Ten things I need for my kitchen. Let's go five. Let's go five. A uh, decent sized pot with a lid. No, 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 no. Let's let's move past. Well, no, because because what do, do you have the basic essentials? No, I'd have to buy them all. Okay. I'm saying the, the things that I wouldn't think to buy. What are, what are five good? Well, what are you what, what are you glossing staples? over that you say are besides the obvious? Tell me what you you would have. Okay, already. so I'm I'm gonna get silverware. Okay. Uh some basic flatware and glasses glasses plates Freaking bowls glasses. okay fine but i'm talking about like cookware cappuccino mug um cookware yeah um i i tend to use a non-stick skillet perfect that's that's good cuz you can use it for eggs very easily i like that um i feel like i still have a cast iron skillet somewhere not as necessary. You really need... I mean, if you're talking bare essentials, you need a pan and a pot. Yeah. That's pretty much mm-hmm. it for your cookware. Because that covers everything you would need to do. Fry, boil, sauce pan. Like, the pan covers sauces, soups, boiling water, blanching vegetables, making pasta, the whole bit. Rice, if you want to. And the pan covers your sautéing, frying, eggs, what have you. So... 
those are just two essential pieces of cookware. Uh, I would recommend a rubber, rather silicone spatula for the eggs, for yep. bowls, for that. Um, a quote unquote pancake flipper spatula, right? So what's what's that made out of? Because if it's a nonstick, it's Teflon, right? Yes, you want something silicone. Ideally, okay. rubber you can use, but the, most of them should be silicone now that you can buy. Um, something heat proof. Mm-hmm. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What else? Uh, I always what have are a grater. Other accoutrements for preparation. Uh, grater, so you can. I like the multi-sided ones. You can do big, small, fine, coarse. You can use it for potatoes if you want to make hash browns. You can do all manner of cheeses. You know, big ones mm-hmm. for mozzarella. The fine one for parmigiano. Um, a spoon and a slotted spoon is useful if you're like draining things and serving things. A ladle if you're doing soups. Um, a wooden spoon is helpful. And these are all like dirt cheap. You can go to the dollar store and get all of these things for less than ten dollars. Yeah. I'm I intend to. Um and let's see, what else? Peeler? Oh yeah, peeler is good. Peeler is necessary. Cause that's not just peeling potatoes, carrots, whatever. You can also um you know, for making salads, if you want to peel cucumber to make them nice for presentation. Uh, peeler gives you a lot of options there. Um, just trying to think what, oh, and a good set of knives. So at the very least a larger knife, like a chef's knife, six or eight inch, um, and a utility knife or a paring knife, something smaller. So that's not something I'm going to find at the Dollar Tree. Uh, maybe, but probably not great. Yeah. (laughs) Probably not the best quality. (laughs) So, Um, um, where would you recommend sourcing something like that? Uh, I have previously gotten all of my cookware on Amazon because um, mm-hmm. when I moved from Connecticut to New Mexico, I shipped it all there, Amazon Prime, and it was there waiting for me. Um, but that is, there's a chef's knife there. It's like 30 bucks. Um, Victoria Knox, the Swiss Army, the little, you know, the red, the cross, right? Yeah. You're familiar with that brand. Uh, they make a, right. a, chef's, a chef's knife. I think I did the six inch or it was maybe eight inch i have to look um that is unbelievably good quality and one of the most affordable chef's knives you can get i got that along with this guard that you put it in this little plastic guard that was like maybe seven dollars just to protect the blade and uh, that lasted me years i maybe sharpened it once but it stayed sharp for a long time if you take care of it uh if you can't get that off amazon because i know amazon has switched to only essentials well hopefully this will you know this will pass and people will be able to get access to you know not just the I'm essential hoping as we approach the peak items. case count we're also approaching the peak access to different essentials and yeah so let's go with that, that let's go with that you're going to be able to get uh, you know things are going to go back to at least semi-normal um i think that is one of the best investments for in terms if you want to get into more cooking a good knife so put the 30 maybe it's 35 dollars into that knife and that will serve mm-hmm. you incredibly well cutting vegetables any kind of meats um yeah highly recommend that highly recommend All right that. and that's it for essentials nice places to start yeah i mean you can All get right. fancy with much. like um a potato ricer if you want to get real fancy and just potato like little, a potato ricer. ricer, yeah, because you can make mashed potatoes with it. It's designed to put like a boiled potato in and then it squeeze. It's like a large garlic press, essentially. Yeah. But what I use it for is to, uh, when I make hash browns, the secret to crispy hash browns is you want to get all the moisture out because water and frying aren't really the best thing. So what you do is you put batches of raw shredded potato into the ricer and squeeze out all the water and that's my secret Mm. to hash browns you know ihop is making hash browns now that used to be an exclusively waffle house thing wait ihop never made hash browns. no you could not get i uh, hash browns at ihop that's like new for a few years now that's but like historically that's like uh -uh. when you find out how 
Berenstein is spelled in the Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. It's yes, like you yeah. realize you have been living in a different parallel universe this entire time. They don't have hash browns with eggs? Mm-mm. That's crazy that they haven't had hash browns before this. That's like I'm, my I'm one almost certain weakness with McDonald's. Have you ever had them? Th- those are okay. Those are a different type of hash brown. I don't consider yeah. that the the because that that is Potato basically patties? yeah that is a glorified Anglo latkes. No, no, that is a glorified <laughs> tater tot. That is a that is a large tater tot. That is not hash brown. It's Irish latkes. Yes, that is not <laughs> a hash brown. Let's talk about another one of the recipes from the zine. Oh, yeah. Speaking of IHOP. Let's give a little background on the zine. If you're tuning in today for the first time, um, we put out a zine um, about two weeks ago now. Yeah, close to it. Yeah. Yeah. So this zine was, was built in mind with the current situation we're in. There's a lot of people who are cooped up inside and... Um, speaking of the scarcity of groceries, we were thinking of something that could be a helpful resource for people who are kind of panic shopping, who are buying too much of not quite the right things. They're not being quite sensible or level-headed, and they're just sort of. I've heard I've heard it described as people people shop in in a sort of panicked mode. Um, because they want to maintain control over something. And because we're in a situation where everything's very uncertain, buying up toilet paper is not about the, the concern that it's the highest priority. It's about feeling like you have control over something. Interesting. Um, there's something that you can, that you can, um, that you can grab a hold of yeah. and, and find some semblance of stability. It's more of a psychological issue. And what we've compiled are nine recipes that use simple ingredients – um, bulk items, mostly dry good items. There's some other things in there as well, but it's um, recipes, and there are plenty more recipes like this that you can do. But these are nine ideas, basically, to get your mind working about how to reconceptualize the way you make grocery shopping decisions right now. Mm. Because we all live in communities where um, we have to be very mindful of the resources that we're taking in right now. And if you are shopping um, in a panicked mindset and you're making poor choices, um, that's affecting everybody else in your community and what they have access to. So these are some recipe options that are simple, um, affordable, and um, can help you calm down a little bit because they're pretty enjoyable. Yes, they are. So. We, um, we're going to talk about uh, what today? The pancakes. Buttermilk pancakes. Please go ahead. Um, I love pa- uh, Breakfast is probably my favorite meal of the day, and I could eat it any time of day. I frequently do, when I have no other options, I do the breakfast for dinner, and I love that. Uh, when I do breakfast for dinner, I will do the full, full eggs, bacon, hash browns, and then some form of either French toast waffle or pancakes. I usually default to pancakes because they're easy, um, and I just love them. They're when you do them right, it's fluffy pillows, and oh, they're just fantastic. And I can't eat IHOP pancakes anymore because I like my pancakes better. Just putting it out there. <laughs> and it sounds like you have a broader menu than them. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, up until recently, now so that 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 launch of the hash browns menu catered to the breakfast lovers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is really it's just a very simple recipe. You don't necessarily need buttermilk, but it definitely helps. Um, have you ever have you had my pancakes? I don't remember if I've had your waffles before. I've is never the batter made... recipe the same? No, no. Okay. No. So let's talk about those differences. Um, waffles, you can't, like, you cannot use. That's like putting, trying to put gasoline in a diesel engine. 
it will not work. Okay. It, it doesn't work. Okay, um, so so tell me tell me a little bit more then. Uh, the I mean they're similar certainly. What makes these distinct? What makes these distinct? Um, uh, my choice of fat. I think mine are actually a little healthier than you'd find with say an, a breakfast chain. Um, because I do not use melted butter, which is what most places will use. I use olive oil, and that makes all the difference. It has a great flavor. It gives it a great texture. They brown beautifully. It's a wonderful golden brown. And then when you top them, once they're cooked with butter, you have just an added layer of complexity there. So that coupled with maple syrup, please use real maple syrup. The problem with quote unquote breakfast or pancake syrup is that it's mostly corn syrup. It's not actual maple syrup from Vermont, Canada, you know, from the maple tree. Mm -hmm. It's artificially or naturally flavored corn syrup. Um, So I highly recommend getting real maple syrup. Um, and they're just they're just delicious. I I usually overindulge when I make them because I'll make a double batch, and uh, it, it's a lot. I'll have at least like four or five pancakes. Here's here's a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the first three things you're gonna do when um, life? Um, either returns to normal or has uh, or in some has some semblance relating to normalcy I'm going to go to the supermarket and buy things I want to go shopping for things oh I'm going to go to home goods I love home goods because I haven't been shopping in ages I love shopping Uh, home goods love home goods Grocery store. Uh, grocery store, yeah. And uh, I'd love to go to a restaurant and actually eat out. As much as I love to cook, um, I'd love to get out of the house that is somewhere that's not work. Yeah, totally. Yeah. My my three? <clears throat> Ready? Um, Indian lunch buffet. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. That, well, that I, I could kind of grind that as restaurant. Yeah, definitely. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. Uh, but that would be my choice of all the things I could do and go out to to experience. Good choice. Um, uh, in Albuquerque, here there's a um, there's an inn slash farm farm shop slash bar called Los Poblanos. Mm-hmm. Lavender Farm. Um, Yes, the Lavender Farm, mm-hmm. and they have uh, a happy hour, and their patio is at the base of the Lavender Field, and um, you can see, like, you know, the sunset over the Sandia Mountains. Do you smell the um, lavender? Yes, you do. Oh, does it put and you right to sleep? And there are peacocks roaming the premises, and alpacas. Huh. Um it's a pretty, it's a pretty otherworldly place, and it's also uncharacteristic if you've never been to new mexico and you have this sense that it's a it's a desert it's near the rio grande um through a whole swath of greenery called the bosque so there's weeping willows there's oak trees there's there's all different kinds of greenery all around it's very unlike what you'd think of the desert i love weeping willows like in the summer seeing a weeping willow it's just oh at that summertime. Especially ones that have a swing on them. I don't even want to go on the swing. Yeah, no, I just, I just, like I just that. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm appreciative that the swing is there. Yeah, you know? if, if somebody wants um, to use it. Yeah. You don't exactly. have to use it. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> my third one is, um, you know, it's just driving somewhere and discovering a new place. Just go on somewhere. Well, you simple. can do that now. You can drive somewhere. You just can't get out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could pump gas and then and then just go hold my breath for 14 days and find out <laughs> if that was it. If that was the time, oh. that was the place, the contact trace. Yeah. You know. Um, 
so uh yeah those those are my three things like i love i love like discovering just like random little small towns in the southwest or just somewhere in the united states agua you know? caliente uh here we are agua caliente um so yeah those are my those are my top three camping would probably be my fourth if i could squeeze in a fourth oh fuck no i despise <laughs> yeah. camping i hate camping i hate it i love it um do you know how I camp though? I don't do I don't even set up a tent. You sleep in your car? I sleep in my Subaru Forester. Yeah. Which when you put the seats down, the whole back is flat and it's it's about the length of a full size bed. Huh. And so I have a three inch foam topper that I just bring with me and roll out and I set up the comforter and the the pillows and everything like that and I set up the whole thing like it's ready to go. So that I can just drive out anywhere. I don't even have to book a campsite. I just find some place wherever I want. Go for a hike. Do whatever I want. And then everything's just all set for me to go. And I'm ready to go to sleep. Huh. It's that's, pretty optimal. That's glamping. It's as, it's, I know, it is glamping. But you know what? It's also a huge time saver. Because I, I, I resent... I know you're not in this group. But I'm talking about the, the purists who, who pride themselves on roughing it. And they have like a pad, um, a sleeping pad in their tent on ground that is pretty much just rock. Um, the thing um, that I appreciate about my situation is there's glamping you can do that's just as or more involved than traditional camping. This is a, just a time saver because I prep everything before I leave. Mm. So it's as, as a moving vehicle from departure point, it's ready to go. I can stop anywhere and just get started. And I can put more time into hiking and reading and doing whatever else I want to do while I'm out in that place instead of spending this time proving how good of a, uh, you know, studious I was of a Boy Scout, which I wasn't. How much of a survivalist you are. Right. Because uh, in reality, when, when it's a survivalist scenario, none of us are going to make it. We're all going to get a cut on our hand and then it's going to get infected. Oh my God. <laughs> This whole notion that, that I can't believe that this is the the same culture that um, that thinks it's going to survive a zombie apocalypse that likes as a fun game to talk about what they'll do during the zombie apocalypse has a major problem with toilet paper. Yep. Um, yep. So, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's not going to be any apocalypse to live through. You're just going to die. <laughs> the Ronnie and Ernie Show is a joint production of Triello Storytelling Company and the Bon Vivant. Our show is now available on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you like what you're hearing, then commenting, subscribing, and reviewing means that this show only gets better. Recipes, projects, or anything we didn't have enough time to get into today's show will be up on our blogs. They are available on triello.org slash blog. And our recipe book is on thebon-vivant.com. And... At each of our sites, you can also take a look at what we're currently up to and check out some of the amazingly talented people with whom we collaborate. Yay! Oh, two. You got two it. Two in a row. Two in a row. Um, it's a good streak. I bid you adieu. We did mention last week that we wanted to do a song. I'm slowly coaxing you into uh, we'll see. We'll coming see. around to the idea. We'll see. I think where we're at is when it's ready, it'll be released. Yeah, we'll see. We'll Whatever what that's happens. gonna be, we'll see. We did it before. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I remember when we did Her Majesty. Yeah, that was probably the best one. And it was in sync <laughs> with all the latency of Google Hangouts. Yeah, it was that actually whole thing pretty was good. Lined up perfectly, and it cut well, as if it understood we were really trying. Yeah. So I was I was very pleased with how that all turned out. But at any rate, until next time, I have a. Um, as best of a week as you can, stay healthy, stay home, 
Um, stay home, stay be safe. Full of exactly all that stuff. Um, you know what to do. Yeah. Just keep it up. All right. Ciao. Bye.